everyone. So look, wow, it's quite a few people here. I just didn't, I didn't think we'd have a lot of here, but I think we must have more people kind of concerned than, you know, we thought, which is actually really good. So welcome everyone. So can you see my screen okay? Just gonna kind of get this up. And the reason I'm gonna put this up is more just because I wanna run through a few things first and then get us talking because I'm a bit of a believer in just kind of having a structure and all that, and then we'll get people, then we'll get people talking. So, hi, look, thanks for coming everyone. And let me just kind of, but let me just jump off here. And I just wanna, Christine's here. Okay, let me just kind of, um, okay, he's one of the guys who said he was gonna come and help me out. So anyway, no issue. Um, it was meant to be, he will be here. So, okay, great. So if everyone's okay with this, I'll get started and just kind of share a few things where I'm coming from and just my thoughts. So just type in the chat anyway, just, um, yeah, like I said, I'll just talk for about 30, 40 minutes and just give a little bit of background on a few things and just kind of reiterate things. Who here, I mean, there's various reasons people can come here. I just want to get a bit of an idea. Can you just put in the text chat or, you know, what basically what's concerning you or what, what, what would be your very brief summary? If you can do that, if you can't, that's fine. But like you're concerned about, you know, you can see this chip coming, you can just see all the rights being taken, that kind of stuff. I better change my name on this. It's got my business name. Yep. Okay. So, like I said, so look, basically, um, I'll just get started anyway. Look, very yeah. simply, the reason I call this is, as probably all of you know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of been seeing this coming for a while, and it's really hard to know where to start, in all honesty. So, just bear with me if I kind of um yeah like bungle my way through this a little bit and whatever else it's just a really difficult thing to start and get any kind of um you know things so yeah rights and freedoms taken mandatory vaccine that's a really common one that's um from elke yeah hi elke helen more concerned about being empowered and how to proceed avril spiritual healer looking for a way to overcome dark forces alex breaking cures over our cities and limit the dark controllers. Georgia, what we can do to help ourselves and our families. Yeah, look, really good stuff. I mean, I, I'm i kind of, look, I really wanted, just wanted to get strong people who are serious tonight. And I feel I've got that, which is good. I really just don't want people here who are kind of not serious because I think we've all worked out this is pretty serious. Um, I've been arguing for a while. Rights have just been getting taken away, You're not coming. And love and light just doesn't work, plain and simple. So, um, yeah, Sam, want to break free from the oppression and help my family and country to rise. Yeah, look, I'm the same. I mean, I, it's plain and simple. The world is heading for microchips. And when you actually understand the microchipping and what's actually in place and what's planned and what it actually means, it's, it's beyond horrific. And yeah, beyond, beyond horrific. It's hard to explain. My problem that I've got. And I'm and please, this is not this is not an ego thing when I say this. I feel like Morpheus in the sense that you find stuff out that in all honesty, for a long time I didn't want to know about. I mean, being a former lawyer, just in case some of you don't know about me, you know, I was shown documents I didn't want to see about everything from exposing pedophile rings and the straight out evidence years ago, showing about vaccination experiments that were actually done on orphans and where the orphans when they died were just kind of erased from the register. I saw documents that um, proved, you know, how much of Australia and how much of the world was owned by corporations and secretly by Satanists. I discovered exactly which house and address in our city of Perth Satanists were running out of. I met people who'd come out of Satanism um, and who exposed and reveal stuff to me. And in all honesty, um, yeah, I just kind of, you know, yeah, being really honest to everyone, I kind of, for quite a long time, I think did what many people do and just, in a sense, try to pretend it wasn't happening, which didn't actually work. So let me just run through some slides. If you could please just mute yourself, everyone. 
that would just be really good. And then, like I said, I'm happy to open it up, but let's do this orderly. And I think one of the reasons why right now Satanists and other assholes have taken over the world is they're very orderly and very systematic. If you actually look at this whole thing, I've just been stunned at how systematic and military this has been. It's like one day you life is going on in a certain way. You wake up and three days later, every country in the world at the same time is doing the same thing. Now, there's nothing coincidental about that. That is military clockwork, military precision, military order. It's gone for a long time. They fucking knew what they were doing them, son of a bitches. And unfortunately, we, we, we look, excuse my French, and you'll either love me or hate me. We fucking deserved it because I think we've all been running around as disorderly as heck, doing our own thing, denying and approaching this totally the wrong way. And let me just kind of give you a bit of background. Um, this is just a name I call it, and there's many reasons why, which I've just called this little group in my own mind, and maybe it'll take on its name. Maybe it won't. I've got no idea. Um, look, why have I called this? Because at the end of the day, I'm fucking fed up with, with people posting stupid conspiracy theories on Facebook and all getting worked up and not actually doing anything about it. And having formerly been a lawyer and being involved in all kinds of freedom fighting and going against governments and winning impossible speeding fine cases, not having done a census for 25 years, getting out of voting fines, getting so good at getting out of speeding fines. I literally had a, a, a special visit from one of the top police in WA actually laughing, telling me that they'd assigned special people to my cases to stop me winning because it was causing them problems. Um, getting people out of taxes, been through numerous government audits, come through everyone without even a, hardly a hassle. So look, my issue is that having balls is not my issue. I mean, I've got, at the end of the day, there's only so much one guy who can do. And you know, I don't say this arrogantly, but I've said very clearly to source to whoever I said, I don't fucking care. I'll take this whole thing on by myself if I have to. Um, but at the end of the day, without, without a team, without a society, without an organized collective, I have no chance. And I got to the stage. I just didn't want to be on this stupid planet anymore. That's how I felt. So look, I'm just going to be real. I just didn't want to be, I thought, fuck this place. I mean, everyone deals with rainforests. They're putting up towers to play with people's frequencies. The worst thing is I could see what was coming and I just thought, ugh, you know, no one's going to do anything about it. Everyone's going to post on Facebook and say all kinds of nonsense. I really, got, I really can't be bothered. So that was where I'm at. And what basically happened was, look, childhood, I'll try and summarize just so you know and where I'm coming from and where I'm at and all that. Look, my childhood, I was bullied like fuck. That was pretty much my whole childhood and um, grew up in a family that was pretty annoying and, you know, had a mum that kind of nagged the heck out of me and just all kinds of stuff that, you know, people go through. It doesn't really matter. I just raised a bullying issue because I had bullying issues. I had health issues. I got vaccinated um, until it was coming out of my ass. I had, um, oh, what else? You know, I had, um, I went to church. I had family who paid their taxes, middle class, all that kind of stuff had a feeling there was something wrong with the world and then basically yeah look when I hit my 20s and late teens I did go through some great spiritual experiences I was fortunate enough to get in a church very young that was awakened and taught me about the mark of the beast and a 666 and what was coming on the world and in 1988 I sat in the Barry Smith meeting brilliant prophet and teacher um, in, the, in what was called his first warning. And he systematically went through and he showed how in 1984, there'd been a technology revealed to microchip humans in their right hand and forehead. Cashless society said in 1988 that George Bush Jr. and Sr. would come into power. He explained about the Bilderbergers, the Federations, the, the all seeing eye, had, my, had me completely captivated as a, young, as a young man and went back and told everyone that this was gonna happen and was, as you can imagine, Apart from my cousins who were at the same meeting, just kind of told I'd gone completely, you know, extremist and to stop being fanatical and just to kind of realize it was just not true. And I continue to stay involved in those kind of groups, but got, I found after a while the churches I was in, I hit a brick wall. They stopped teaching this kind of stuff. I end up with very severe health issues, to put it mildly. Um, that got me started on many things. I got stuck into um, 
that was when I got an alternative health because at the age of 30, I had chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, full on depression, ruined back, hardly sit, hardly work, hardly do a thing, couldn't play piano anymore and did everything doctors told me and got worse. So in the end, that's what got me started and got into vaccine and, and, and discovered about vaccinations and how they really worked. I got myself healed over a few years with some alternative spiritual healing. Um, and basically from there, yeah, had a miracle healing in 2003. I started a church in 2004 that was an awakened church where I was, um, just mute yourself if you could. Um, who is this? Um, just until we get up. Um, yep. Yeah. So basically, yeah, in 2004, I ran a church for a few years with, with Grace, who's here, a very awakened kind of church. We addressed this kind of stuff. And at that time when I began the church, I started to learn about Satanism. And um, I had various experiences in the 90s in the churches I was in where I met a guy who could see energy, could see demons as clearly as he could see people, a guy called Carl, who Grace certainly remembers. He used to tell us, he used to tell us that they were always trying to put um, witches and warlocks and all kinds of um, people into our church to try and actually um, infiltrate it. He could see him and he would walk up and kick him out um, and was seen as an extremist by other people in the church, but he kept the church pretty clean until they pretty much launched a full-on attack against him and put him out of commission. So at the time, I then got hit with a pretty heavy attack because I'd been taught how to do sacred music activations and do healings with that. And at the time, I just didn't understand this stuff. And all I knew was in my 20s, my life fell apart in a big hole. As I said, my health got really sick. My things just kind of, I felt like I had a permanent brick wall in my mind. I just couldn't seem to get anything to work. Financially, I just seemed to hit brick walls. I lost my money. I go into investments and make money, and then I lose money. I started my church, and that changed. Started making a lot of money, and then I found out I met a guy who really opened my mind, who had actually helped counsel one of the top warlocks and Satanists in Australia. And this guy taught him stuff that completely and utterly like blew my mind at the time. But yet I knew it was right. And he started teaching me, well, not really teaching me, he kind of came into the church and said, you're going to basically learn how to do this properly and started teaching me how to, as Aaron Williams, who's here, would say, school me and gave me military ass kicking. And I didn't like him one little bit, but I felt it was this guy was teaching me something. So I put up with it. But I got taught how to attack Satanism and how to deal with these kind of ritual spells. I learned how they went into cities and how they would take the seven highest mountains in the city. They would spend ages doing child sacrifices to the god Moloch. They set up war memorials in the shape of a penis, which was an ancient um, statue to Moloch. And which when you read through the Old Testament, the scriptures and various things, whenever societies were cleaned up, one of the first things they did was clean up the monetary system and get rid of these um, statues and these obelisks and things like that. And I learned all this. Now, he, he warned me, he said, don't do this stuff lightly because one, once they've worked out you know what you're doing, your church will get a special assignment. Now, I must admit, I thought this sounds like a fucking sci-fi movie, man. And um, he said they're, what, they're watching the churches all the time. And as soon as a church awakens, they can see the energy of the church. They know it's awakened. And now I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. They, they know straight away. And he said the warlock who he'd been helping had told him all the churches in Australia are asleep. But he said, occasionally one wakes up. So as soon as we woke up, we started seeing healings and miracles and people shifting in their minds. Mind you, most people in the church thought I'd gone, I'd lost my complete marbles. We lost a whole heap of people. Um, Grace and I continued to kind of stay on our path. Other people joined us in the work. We saw miraculous financial breakthroughs happen, like really miraculous ones. And we started having weird things happening, like demons turning up in my room and physically grabbing my feet. And one turned up, tried to choke me at night. I had another dream where Satan appeared to me in the dream and talked to me and showed me how he controlled the financial system. And basically was glaring at me, um, saying to me pretty much that um, I'm not going to let you anywhere near this system, mate. I don't let people like you near it. Yeah. I'll come after you. And... 
that kind of got me pretty excited, to be honest with you. And that made me think, you know, brilliant, you know, really brilliant. It made me kind of think that I was on the right track. So that's how it all happened. And but to cut a long story short again, I didn't quite know what I was doing. I got it a bit over my head. Um, I didn't realize the cap capability they had to attack me through reaching people in my life who were close to me, who were basically more vulnerable. And I didn't realize about how they could, um, you know, I didn't realize how they could get me in various ways. And because at the time I also lacked some power and personal confidence. And although I was confident in my time as so I was an ex-lawyer, accountant, I was very good at law, very good at accounting. I wasn't confident in my spiritual leadership when I doubted myself. I took advantage of that and ended up basically making some silly decisions. Church fell apart over 12 months, left me a little bit scarred from the whole experience. But in saying that, many good things came out of that because I learned about the Satanism. I learned about this stuff, had financial breakthroughs. And the big thing that happened was he taught me about rituals to do with oil, salt, and using the scriptures to break satanic power on the high places. Now it was well known there was a place called Chalk Hill in Quinana near us, where the Satan, which is one of the seven high places of Perth, Western Australia. Now, one of the people in our church who had been coming along and his her boyfriend was kind of chuckling at all of this and thinking I was a bit off off my tree. And one night he went to Chalk Hill to have a little bit of a, a booze fest with his mates. And he and, and as he's about to start drinking, he saw some footsteps walking towards him, there's no one there. And he heard them clearly and he just shut himself and they ran. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, right, this chalk hill. So I went up there on my own. Um, I also been taught from him how these top warlocks and, and demon people could actually turn themselves into birds and do all kinds of weird things, which sound like a movie, but I kind of just went with it. And they started turning up. And next minute, literally as I got there, we had crows just infested as I turned up there on my own. And they were squawking at me. And I was just standing there like in astonishment. People in our church told me similar experiences. They were having crows just turn up at their house squawking. So I thought, this is fucking awesome, man. So I kind of looked at the crows and I just started doing the rituals I was taught. Broke the, and I broke the power and broke the incantations they'd done. And literally things started happening in the area, improving. I went down to the beach because I found out that one of their main places they'd work at was at Chalk Hill, it was in the beaches. They would go and they would do child sacrifices and they understand the law of the blood, which means that if you pour out blood of a, of a murder victim, which has been murdered in a child sacrifice ritual victim, you can curse it and you can call up spirits from the earth. So they especially do it at the beaches to block the beaches and block the energy of the water from coming into a city. So. I just said, oh, what the heck, let's go and break it down, down Rocco Beach. So I went down to Rocco Beach. I went with six people from our church who I think like, were kind of thinking I'd lost my marbles, but they thought, well, let's just go along for the fun. And literally, I must admit, I, I was completely astonished at what happened. Because what I did was anointed the beach with oil from the jetty for about a two or 300 meter radius. And as we walked away, one of the guys said, oh my gosh, look, Warren, look, look, look. And I looked and I just stared in astonishment and everyone in the beach was staring in astonishment. This white mist of pure light was coming out of the water exactly from where I started and it was physically seen and everyone was just gasping and we were just staring in astonishment. And that moment I thought, okay, we we're onto something. We're fucking onto something, man. And interestingly enough, I even went down to the local war memorial and started doing it and got arrested straight away. And I just thought, oh, what the heck? And the cop said, why are you down that memorial doing that stuff? And all I just said to him was, well, um, I just smiled. I said, because I'm anointing it with oil to bless the community, aren't I? And stop the Satanism. And the guy just looked at me and goes, are you serious? I said, yeah. And he laughed. He goes, okay, fair enough. Well, I'll let you go. And um, Robert says, maybe that's why they stop people going to the beach to free it for rituals. Well, yeah, of course. And they shut the obelisk at one stage, the war memorial um, in Kings Park to do stuff like that. So I, I know for a fact that between three and 4.30 in the morning, they do that stuff. They go down the war memorials, they kill the young victim on it and they pour the blood over the war memorial. So they do that kind of shit. And they have underground tunnels in Melbourne, Perth, everywhere going into the parliament house and all kinds of shit. 
So, yeah, so basically I found all this out in 2004, and I thought, okay, in five. So I learned all this stuff, and I never forgot this stuff. And I did a bit more around Rockingham. I got busy around that area, and we cleaned it up quite a lot. And soon after, there was a lot of changes and positive improvements in the infrastructure, and the area actually went from a high crime to improving. But then what happened was, um, cut a long story short, I, my experience of losing the church got me a bit burnt. I started, I got my business going, my business exploded. I became Australia wide, became a little bit famous, went worldwide. I was flying all over the place speaking. I got to my head a little bit and 2010, I got a triple whammy, lost business, lost health, lost marriage. And that kind of was a bit of a, again, a bit of a shock. And that, that probably really scarred me a little bit. And that took me a little bit of a while to deal with that one. And I, I, got, I got my business up and running again because, and was all working, making money. But really by about two years ago, I was jaded, you know? I'd gone through various things. I'd worked with some powerful spiritual healers. I'd flown to Vegas and got mentored by a guy, learned high technology, even was making money. But every time I'd seem to make a lot of money, something would happen. And in the end, I just thought, oh, this is just pointless. And in April 2018, exactly two years ago, I just said, yeah, what's the point? You know, fuck this. I mean, I actually made a prayer and said, God, Father, I said, basically, I fucked up. Whatever my life purpose was, I didn't, I didn't do it. I said, I've got four boys. So I've got, you know, good partner, got all that. But hey, none of that means anything if the world's going to be taken over by Satanists, which it obviously is. And I could see it was happening and things aren't working for me and can you just get me out of here and I'll just kind of work it all out and, you know, reincarnate in another form or something. I don't know, but I said, I don't really see how this is all going to work anymore. And about two weeks later, and to cut a long story short again, I ended up in this mystery shamanic um, school with a guy one-on-one -on -one, and took me through a ritual, an ancient ritual, and said, I'm going to connect you with source and see what happens. And then got the shock of my life when nine extraterrestrials turned up. And that was when everything changed. And it was actually, it was actually quite funny because the, the main guy who led the nine of them went off his absolute banana at me and he absolutely got stuck into me for an hour and said to me, you know your path and you know why you're here and you know what you're meant to do. Why the fuck are you carrying on winting like that? And I'm like, I don't know. I said, well, and I, and I argued with him for about an hour, but basically turned out they were called the Council of Nine. I later discovered that mystery school teachings are the group who oversee this universe and oversee the whole, um, you know, basically see the whole plan of this planet to move this planet into an ascension and move this planet to the next stage of evolution. And... I had nine hours of it with this group. After finally yielding and saying I was scared, but I'd be willing to do what they asked of me, they told me a number of things that were going to come to pass on planet Earth. And Mika says a total lawyer arguing with them. Oh no, the funny thing was, was the main guy said, God, he said, even as a lawyer used to be argumentative, and now you're arguing with us. He said, most people would be scared of us, and you're not scared of us, you're just behaving like a dick. So that kind of woke me up a little bit and I just like, said, yeah, look, I just said, I'm just scared. I said, you're telling me to stand up against these Satanists and do something about this. I said, mate, I'm just a simple accountant, lawyer kind of guy who just kind of keeps making various fuck ups in my life. And you're telling me to go and do something about this. I said, I mean, I've got, I mean, who's got, no one's gonna listen to me. They're just gonna think I'm a, I'm a conspiracy idiot. That's what I kept arguing. So I said, no one will take me seriously apart from a few fruitcakes who kind of like running around listening to nonsense. And so once I yielded and I stopped fighting and said, okay, look, I just said, I'll, I'll just do what you say. I said, I do actually love this planet. I do want to see some change. And I said, you, you, you just tell me what to do. And that was when it got quite interesting because I, first of all, they told me about a major economic meltdown that was coming. And some of you here would remember the webinar I gave about 18 months ago when I told that the economy would melt down in a crumpled heap and it would collapse so brutally people wouldn't know it hit them. And I predicted that there'd be a microchipping implant coming into the planet very shortly. 
and there would be a cosmic dark mile of the soul or great tribulation that would be hitting the planet. That would be the worst time that Earth has ever experienced. And I think most people and most of my clients thought I had just taken too much LSD and lost the plot. And about 10 people, I think about 15, 20 people maybe believe me. And most of them took protective action on their finances because I was told what to tell people and all those people are now in a fairly solid position. Um, I was told the protective action to take myself, but they warned me, they said, this crash is going to be so brutal. And they actually said, we love humanity and we're concerned because we're not ready for this crash. This crash is going to be so bad. They said, the world as you know it will virtually end and melt down. And then they also told me, they said, um, you're going to be having this time, this dark night of the soul on planet Earth, like nothing you've ever seen. And then the interesting thing that happened was, was they took me into, a, into, a, into the higher realms. And when I was in those higher realms, I was taken into Arcturus. And to explain what Arcturus is, in our, in our solar system, there's Arcturus, which is like the midway technology station, which kind of is the intermediary um, planet or dimension that's between our dimension and what's called the higher quantum farther universe, as they call it. Then there was the Orion Belt, um, or the Orion Gate, and the Pleiades. They're the three main places, which the keys of Enoch and Mystery School teachings give. Um, like I said, I'm just giving you higher level stuff because I'm just going to assume you guys are serious. And I'm going to assume that if people are thinking, God, this guy is a bit of a dick, you'll just log out and get off the webinar. Because really, I'm just, you know, there's plenty of other people doing plenty of other stuff about this. And I'm just looking for people who go, yeah, no, this resonates with me. And basically what they told me very clearly was to do that. They then took me into Arcturus and they did, two, they did a few things in me. One was they healed me from a lot of childhood traumas I had about bullying and everything. I had done everything possible from psychotherapy to kinesiology to all kinds of stuff and got some level of results, but they healed the whole of the stuff literally about an hour. And then the thing that really got me interested was they started to break witchcraft, black witchcraft, Satanism, and smash cords off me. And I heard cords snapping off me. And there were all kinds of cords and attachments and parasitic links to me. But they were breaking cords, as they said, of greed, of lust, a spirit of, av of avarice. I heard spirit of lust, spirit of dark witchcraft, spirit of abuse. And one by one, these things are breaking off me. And I was just like, what the fuck? I, and they said to me, believe you me, they said, you know, we've got a lot of stuff to get rid of off you. So they did. And then over the coming weeks after that finished, of course, I pretty much was in shock, as many of you would imagine. I was given messages to give to various people which I did, and all of them were like, how did you know this? But all of them got on their path because of it. And then as the coming months went on, I started to be regularly taken into higher dimensions. It became a normal way of being. Without exaggerating, I had about 400 implants removed from me, satanic implants and mild control devices, taken in the various realms off me. I was shown how the whole plan worked. I was told about this mark of the beast and his 666. I started telling people in November 2018 about lockdowns and how they're going to be locking down airports. And my own family even said to me, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you won't be able to travel. And I said, I see airports locked down. I just kept seeing visions of all this stuff. And then I saw fires and coming into, into places. So yeah, look, and the thing that I, I was scared about was I thought, shit, I'm turning into one of those fucking psychic puppets. And I really don't want that because that just kind of means everyone's going to think I'm some crazy dude. So I was in conflict because on the one hand, I felt in purpose, but on the other hand, I had this going on. But last year, as a result of it all, I had a very challenging time because I really just kind of struggled with it all. And, thought, and I went through a bit of a kind of dark time for some months where my health fell apart. I kind of lost all sense of time and space. I was seeing the future so clearly that I didn't know anymore what was past, future or now for quite a while and had to go through a 10 day water fast and things like that. So Georgia asked about how I got the implants. Well, what they told me, Georgia, they said humanity's infested with them. And they opened up my third eye and I, told, I couldn't believe it. I still, they, they actually saw that cities were covered with implants and blocked. And they said, Warren, they said, these guys have been planning for hundreds of years while you guys have been asleep. And they said, and then what the one thing that really did kind of sober me up was they were pretty much mad about planet Earth. They said, seriously, your planet is appalling. 
They said, what you do with your rainforest, the way you treat women and each other. They said, the way you extort each other in business, it's appalling. They said, and we're not going to put up with it. They said, how then saying that, we are going to give people fair warning, but we need people to do it. So you're going to be warning people, Warren. You're going to start warning them and warning people about the consequences because believe you me, we're going to sort this fucking shit out. That's what I was told. And I said, Warren. shit. Yep. Sorry, I just wanted to say while you were on that topic quickly to everyone, um, what you were saying about the, the, the parasites and um, implants, what it is, it's nanotechnology and it's actually what chemtrails are. Chemtrails are actually nothing to do with chemicals. They're nanobots that attach to us. Um, I've got actual proper evidence from a high ranking military uh, member in the United States. Um, I'm going to put something about that in the 99% group and in your group. I just want to say, look up nanotechnology because that's what they are. Yeah, well, that's continue, that's sir. Yeah, nanotechnology. yeah, that's really interesting, Aaron. No, look, thank you. Yeah, because I know they use that kind of stuff and then they use special controlling programs to put into people's minds as well, which I was taught. So, yeah, thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, so look, basically, yeah, so look, there's all kinds of stuff they do, like, yeah, mind control programs. Um, Christine, who's here, would know with Stuart Swerdlow, former um, CIA guy, said, yeah, they used to do that. In the um, Rebecca Brown's book about setting the captives free, who got out one of the top priestess witches in America, they actually do, you know, they used to have people that would make people have car accidents and all kinds of stuff. And so, yeah, there's some pretty serious stuff that actually would do um, to do this kind of stuff. So that was the thing that hit me and I thought, shit, you know. Um, so, yeah, they basically... So then, of course, I've done a lot of webinars to help clients clear this kind of stuff. But yeah, look, even recently, I found that what's happened is the more I've been connecting with higher realms and my eyes have opened, my biggest issue has been now, I do see these things pretty clearly over people and see the planet Earth is infested with these fucking, these fucking things, these parasitic cords, these portals and wormholes, these what's called auric attachments. Aaron put it, yeah, now Aaron no doubt will be able to show me and teach me some other stuff, um, which um, as well. So, you know, as we go along this, and that's why I asked him to come along. So as we kind of finish this, so yeah, look, basically the big thing is there's a lot, there's a big job ahead to do. So number one, clear this kind of stuff, but not just from us, but the clear things from the planet. Last year, I told a lot of people, I said, I was told very specifically when I had visitations from angels and councils and masters, they, they told me, they said, Warren, they said, we're going to completely heal you of everything in your body. So you've got no health issues because we're going to, because you're going to be busy next year because your way of life will change. Um, we're going to start dealing with the shit. And they said, we're going to lift our protection off your country of Australia. And they told me that clearly. They said, we've been protecting your country, but we're fed up with the karma that's going on in this place. We're fed up with what's going on. People are not listening. So they said, we're going to lift, we're going to lift our protection. And I said, hang on a sec. I said, is there anything we can do and change this? Um, they said, nope. They said, too late. They said, what you can do, though, they said, some parts of the world will go into an implanted technology and they're going to go through times so horrific you can't imagine. They did tell me your country has a chance. They said, if it wakes up fast enough, that it can be a sanctuary because they said there will be parts of the world that this technology will not take off, but it will depend on being able to raise the level of consciousness and being able to get people back to the right way of living and the right courses of action. So they said, in the end, by the time they'd been educating me for many hours and days and weeks and taking me in the higher realms, I just said, I'll do whatever it takes. And even about six weeks ago, I just said to them, guys, I'm yours. I'm surrendered. I said, I'll be your bitch. I said, I'll do whatever it takes. I said, my life isn't my own. It's a shitty planet anyway. I said, I, I said, I'll fucking sort this out. I said, I don't care if no one likes me again. I said, I'm going to be the worst asshole on the planet. And I, don't, and I, you know, all I hope is that I've set heaps of people to get them moving. I said, I'll just do what it takes. So that's kind of like what happened. So anyway, just quickly, 
I want to show you something that is what I was taught by them and what's pretty obvious. Why is it the Satanists and these guys are taking over? Because they're fucking smart, okay? They know the correct order of manifestation to make things spiritually and consciously come about. The satanic priests, like the seven Jesuit priests, the Council of the Jesuits, the, um, you know, these kind of people, the top Satanist priests and the sorcerers and the Council of 13 witches and all this kind of stuff, they influence basically the financial people. I mean, you probably heard by now, if you've got half a brain, that Miley Cyrus and all these um, celebrities all make deals with Satan, and that's how they get successful. And John Todd, who was a, a grand druid, the druids are one of the worst of the priests, as Aaron would confirm, but the druids are absolute shockers. Yep. Um, they, they were some of the ones who involved in child sacrifice and in bringing in Halloween. The druids, of course, like many of our top business owners and super wealthy people that are either druids or they're influenced by druids themselves. The druids then influenced them and they may have provided you do what the druids tell you and make a deal with Lucifer. And in the setting the captives free, Rebecca Brown explains how Lucifer actually often turns up in the physical and you sign your contract in blood. And once you sign the contract, you're in. Tina Turner admitted when she was 50 that her career was washed up and then she made a deal with Satan. So, they make the deal, the finance, the, fin, the finance comes in, and then the business owners tell the government what to do, okay? So the masses, of course, do nothing at all, live in denial and basically live their life and just kind of go around pretending it's all happening and call you conspiracy theorists and have their jobs and basically, you know, just behave like complete bananas. Church goes, enough said, support the beasts and in many ways are the biggest culprits of all because they often fight for the beast. I mean, the love and light movement, or what I call the people who really are overall good people, behave as if they had an IQ of under 50. And if that offends you, good. I hope it does. Um, in other words, do their own thing or disorderly and uh, political, they run around, they go the exact reverse of what the Satanists do. They say, oh, we're going to go and we're going to fight the vaccination. We're going to fight the 5G process. We're going to fight climate change. And of course, if you just think about it, Imagine you're a group of Satanists and rich people sitting there. They'd be pissing themselves laughing. And I often do satirical posts and say, mate, I could just imagine him sitting there, you know, having a bit of a chuckle to himself saying, isn't this funny? Let's watch these idiots. Okay. Now let's just set these towels upon them. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying these things aren't important because they are, but there's an order and process and a way by which we can actually do this about, you know? So, the whole point I'm saying here is that yes, I do not vaccination as we know. They've got some. That's a perfect way to indoctrinate humanity ready for this thing. No question that 5G not only is a problem, but back in 1991, I can tell you now, I was working for the Australian Taxation Office and I was called into a meeting along with all the staff, and we were told back then, before internet, before mobile was in place, before there was any 4G or anything. But basically, they, they had big concerns about electromagnetic frequency waves or EMFs. And to my great annoyance at the time, being very uninvolved about this, they said we weren't allowed to be on our computers at lunchtime to play games. They wanted us to basically take regular breaks from the computer to avoid EMF exposure because of the effect it would have on our nervous system and our health. Now, back then, I thought, oh, what a bunch of idiots, you know, they're just being silly. But the government were actually concerned about the effects of EMFs because they've been warned by the lawyers about lawsuits at the time. Now, this was before 5G and 4G. So you can only imagine that if 1991 EMFs were a problem, how much are EMFs a problem even now without 5G? And the truth is they're a terrible problem. I can remember, I go to various kinesiologists and energetic health workers, and I first, when I first used to go, I had all kinds of EMF problems in my body, which Fortunately, there is Tesla technology and homeopathics and, and, and machinery that can actually fix that up in you. And of course, I wear a Tesla plate um, over my chest. I have a special Tesla disc at home for my water. I have a special um, technology in my house which neutralizes EMFs. And I have a special thing on my phone, on the back of the phone that does it. And I use copper coiling around my headset and don't use Bluetooth. So I'm very aware of EMFs. So that's why I do not misunderstand me. I take major action on EMFs. The truth is, I don't care if they put 6G up, it can't affect me because I don't know how to deal with it. 
but we have a responsibility for our community. But in saying that, I have to emphasize here, look at how the Satanists do it, okay? Why have they got control of the world? <clears throat> because they fucking know the right order. So that's what, that, so if I had to tell you the main reason why I've called this today is because spiritual comes first, not the other way around. We've got to get deal with the stuff that they're doing here, raise our energy, raise the consciousness, and actually get influenced through what I call true priesthood, okay? So true priesthood, priesthood that's actually going to do good by people. So the reason I'm doing this, I don't care if we just get 12 people out of this or 14 or seven people, whatever. They only needed seven Jesuits or seven witches or whatever to control the world and, the very, and 13 families. So it doesn't take a lot. It just takes very united, very aware, very awakened people who do what it takes. So 666, and keep in mind, I've spent most of my life studying mystery schools, all my spare time work right now is I study like Enoch teachings, I study the Bible, I study every single little thing I can find out on. I just spend every spare moment, I study about different demon spirits and how they work, and then I go ahead and neutralize them. So my little joke, I'm, as I call myself Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter, I, 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 I hunt demons. So even a few weeks ago, I went down to our local water, because when I saw this whole thing happening, I thought, okay, I better get down, and I got busy anointing with oil. I went around our local area, found numerous satanic altars on our high place, found our highest place around our local area. Sure enough, the bugs had built one, so I just neutralized the whole energy. And immediately stopped the tax happening at night because we've been getting sleeping problems. We've been having attacks in our dreams. I then hunted around, went driving around, got my partner to help me, and we found various satanic altars around their area. Went down the beach and we anointed them all. Now, just to give you a little bit of news on that, 15 months ago, we went and anointed our whole beach right near where I live. And it was incredible. I was the same experience of the, the white mist coming out of the beach was happening. I was hearing music. I actually was hearing heavenly music, but no one else could hear as I was walking. And this happened for about an hour. And it was like, ah, oh, out, man. And they kept saying to me, keep doing this, man. Keep doing this, man. Now, I will admit that every time I do it, I would, oh. when I did it two weeks ago, I literally got attacked so severely, I almost got seriously sick. Um, fortunately, I do know how to ward it off, so I was able to neutralize 80% of it straight away. But still, I felt tired, so I just quickly got home. Once I finished it, I uh, went into the had I had a bath with magnesium, drank lots of water, did some meditation, and went to bed early and slept for about eight hours. And I woke up and I was fine. But the, so the point was, um, there's a lot we can do, and I'm willing to teach people who are serious. I really am. I've been reluctant up to now because. Number one, I don't trust most people with this kind of knowledge. I think they'll be stupid by and large. And I'm just going to be really real with people. Um, that's one reason. Another reason is, yeah, look, I just basically, I just couldn't be bothered with people who aren't serious about it. But look, right now, I don't think we've got much choice because in a way we're out of time. Um, it doesn't take much brains to see that, yeah, very, we're not that far off from people you won't, look, I'm predicting that as it is, there's a good chance you will not be able to get on a plane without some kind of health um, approval. China's already doing it. They're talking about it, some kind of health thing. In China right now, you get social credits now um, and you have, to get, you have to have a green dot on your health app on your phone or you can't go and do certain things and you get awarded brownie points for good behavior with the government and you get penalized if you don't. And... They've talked about this new cryptocurrency with Bill Gates being able to do that and it can be your performance, monitor whether you're a good boy or girl. And if you are, you get certain brownie points and you can travel. If you don't, you can't until you make it right with the regime. So just, that's what, so this is what you've got. Um, six is the number um, of the vibration of the earth. Um, as you can see here, um, just keep in mind, someone's got your mic on. Um, shut that up. Like I said, I'm just moving through this a bit. Um, and yeah, Robert said, a lot will just walk, laugh and walk away. Look, we don't have time for that now. I'm sure we would agree. So six is a number according to Hertak, Professor Hertak and the Keys of Enoch. That's the vibration of the earth. 
So these guys understand all the sacred coding, the sacred mathematics, and there's so much to teach that a lot of this I've just got to take me for granted. And those who decide you want to kind of learn more, I will um, obviously teach you more over the coming days and we'll work together. So Revelation 13, 16, this is this thing, if you haven't heard of it, about this cryptocurrency patent. Um, hang on, I'm just having to... Um, I mean, yeah, people saying, yeah, look, I'll tell you more about it. But as you can see here, 666, six here. And McAfee had something else showing on the 6th of the 6th, 2006, was um, where they also did the initial kind of creation of the patent or something like that. So Aaron says, humans are made of six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons. Interesting, thank you, Aaron. So yeah, I'll keep moving away from the slides because the annoying chat, I can't see it unless I do that. But yeah, even the name of the inventor, main inventor, Dustin Abramson, um, Abraham's son, that's a scriptural thing. And most of these buggers are Zionist Jews who use the Old Testament in a literal sense rather than a spiritual sense that Christ brought it in. So there's all codings everywhere. Um, you've got this, um, Six, six, there were 6,666 coronavirus cases a couple of days ago, exactly when all of this came out. Um, let me just show you something I'm sure you've seen by now, but Revelation 13. And I use the King James Version because all the other Bible translations since 1975 have been tampered with, and all those stupid little versions out there like New International and others, They've had spiritists, Satanists, and witches on all the committees. You can read Dr. Rippinger's, his various uh, professors who can prove that. So that's pretty easy. And believe you me when I said done my research on this. So, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, which means Miley Cyrus, um, all the super rich, um, Lady Gaga, um, to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads. The right hand is between the thumb and the second finger, which is a very important acupuncture point in the body, which connects directly to one of your main central meridians, or in their foreheads, which is of course right in your third eye pineal gland. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast. In other words, your economic livelihood, security, right to earn a living, right to eat, right to go out and about, right to visit places, right to go into public places, right to basically travel, right to do everything, is basically done keeping in mind that if someone is able to put an implant right in the middle of your pineal gland they can control your thoughts so they can create whatever simulations they want they can create a simulation where you wake up and 80 demons are running at you and werewolves are coming at you and where you're seeing planes fly at you um they could shit around with you they could send you crazy as much as they want to and no doubt that they'd have special programs that if you have a thought or anything that goes against the regime's best interest, you'll be getting tormented, provided you think and do what the regime tells you, and you move as they tell you, then your reward will be you'll probably sleep well. And my guess is they'll probably, they won't necessarily be forcing initially. I think they'll lure a lot of people in by promising you all kinds of things, like they promised all these benefits in Australia. So that's why 100 people in Canberra took it as a bit of an experiment. That's why Sweden, 4,000. No doubt when crime increases and social unrest comes out of all of this, people will be getting phones and money stolen off them. And one of the benefits will be if you get a tip like this, no one can take it off you. And if it's in your there, they'll be told that you won't have to worry about being robbed. You won't have to worry about this. You probably will even be promised some kind of ability like the Matrix to download programs where imagine you could download a Kung Fu program into your third eye. So people go, oh fuck, that's awesome. And go and get one. So I think this will be easier for them to sell than people think. Because I think by and large, most people are dumb and driven by ego. So when you read this here, and I don't have time to go into this, but there was a, there's also a mark of the father, which is a different mark, which basically means a loyalty to a higher law and things like that. So the main thing to notice with this scripture um this activation is this things like um he does great wonders to make fire come down from heaven on earth and the side of men well as aaron will tell you and if you study different technology 
holographic means you can create in the sky and it looks so real where you can have fire, you can have holographic things, you can look like an alien invasion, blue light in the skies, everything. And the seeds then that dwell on the earth, in other words, are attached to the earth by means of those miracles. So, and notice they should make an image to the beast um, and worship the image of the beast. Now the holographic technology means that all of us right now could be sitting here and the new world leaders image could be in our home sitting on the couch next to us having a chat to us. And you know, you might have to give honor to the beast in some way. So the technology is all there. It's all happening. Guys, we're in it right now. And Project Bluebeam, something like that, as Robert says, no doubt, um, something like that. So all very interesting and very straightforward. So, okay. So now that's the basic nuts and bolts. Then I'm going to kind of let Aaron get up and speak, but just let me finish with a few quick things. Um, this is just giving you a sample without going into this as to what I've kind of gone into when I've taught clients, but literally shitty money experiences, investments getting fucked up, tax audits, um, being fines of police states. If you study advanced Satanism and, and setting the captives free, when they come after you to attack you, they can't do it unless they've got a loophole or a karmic loophole into you. So they always do a scan of your hologram to see if they can get in. So once I learn to shut my doors, they haven't been able to get near me. But the point is that if you've got implants and if you've got unresolved shit in your life, then they can get to you. So that's why I'm not remotely fussed about this whole thing. I'm just doing the path I was told to do by the council. And they've told me, we want you to help humanity, Warren, and devote yourself to basically sorting this out. That's part of my own little um, path. And I've been, that's why I've been doing mystical work to learn how to basically live with virtually no food. I mean, I've been that extreme. These days I hardly eat. Um, I don't tell a lot of people how little I eat, but literally I hardly eat. My aim is that the time will come and I'm almost there now where I just won't have to eat. It's an option. I virtually hardly eat now at all. Because as I said, if I don't have to eat, I don't have to do anything. Well, who gives a fuck what they do um, with economic livelihood if I'm not dependent on this fucking earth or any, or any of their little stupid benefits. So the, the point is, all this stuff is possible. And you've got this here. They're going after um, getting people's rights and freedoms. They're certainly going to go after alternative medicine. If you're in any kind of alternative medicine or health, um, which I'm sure a lot of you are, you're going to have to be in very good state because I think you've worked out by now that this is a World Health Organization takeover to control people's health. So you better make sure you really know what you're doing and you're ready for this and you're strong because they're certainly coming for this. Um, and I'm sure you've all worked this out well and truly by now. So there's various demons. And I have done a course um, on teaching people about demons, for example, before. Um, yeah, fine for Robert. Yeah, so basically, um, for example, I actually ran a whole course with my son, William, on dark masters and demons. There's lots of them. Aaron's page talks about them, like Abaddon. Um, if you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, it talks about that um, Enoch prophesied 5,000 years ago, but Belial... There's four princes of hell in the Satanic Bible, Satan, Lucifer, Leviathan, and Belial, for example. And Belial is the one that's going to be leading this war. So they believe you me, they've been calling up some horrendous spirits in the last 18 months from the earth. And if you've noticed a sudden horrific increase in feeling crazy, heavy energy, that's why. There's worse spirits being called up day after day. We're seeing a lot of them running around now because I can see energy. Um, I'm sure some of you are feeling that stuff there. So, yeah, you've got Belial, you've got the Sons of Anak is another one who basically we've been having to do some dealing with as well. Lexi's noticing a new malevolent ET on the planet. Yeah, we'll talk about that later, Lexi. But yeah, so ultimately, this sovereignty is you are in your own power, but you're connecting the source, whereas most people are that. They're under a government, what I call a cartel. Um, government. So this is where you wish to be. Have your power, but know there is a higher karmic law that you've got to account to 
And while you ignore that karmic law and think you can do what you want, well, guess what? They can pretty much, they know they've got you, they know you're stupid, and they can have fun with you. So I won't go into this now, but karmic law, sowing what you're re reaping, what you sow, um, if you do karmic actions or cause damage or harm, you've got to fix it. And if you don't fix it, you reap karma for it. So everything from your life, your, pa your, your parents' life, your past lives, your ancestral lives, the imprint of the mass mind all affect you. So one reason I'm doing this is I know that the mass mind will really affect me. So I've taught these like karmic laws and many people where they make the mistake today, they think it's only about inner truth, which is not. This is the most important, the higher karmic laws and the councils, brotherhoods and Elohim who govern the peace, security and prosperity and make sure that we're in order. And right now we're not. And then as I found out, I had my own karmic call where I'd agreed to do this path and I'd actually made an agreement. But if ever I got off my path and got caught up with money, I'd lose all my money because I didn't want to lose my go off path. So that's another factor as well. So the 10 commandments, uh, not how the church teaches them, because honestly, as you probably worked out, most churches are a bunch of absolute state controlled nitwits. But by and large, he's actually, as Christ said, summarized in the this, the law of love. And in fact, English common law, Magna Carta, is just really simply that, life, liberty, property. So if I value your life, liberty, property, um, yeah, it's just, you're going to do the right thing. So I'm just giving you a bit of a sneak preview of some of the stuff, for example, which I've done, not because I'm going to ask you to do anything like this. I just want to give you a little bit of a quick overview. Ben Aaron, I'd love to get you to share a little bit. Um, um, but yeah, actions have consequences. And finally, I'm not going to teach on this, but this is a, like a dark master's course. There's five classes I did here. But here is just some examples of some spirits. This one controls the financial realm and basically right now her physical um, incarnation, to give you an idea, for example, is, um, I'll just pick this. So for example, right now, this, and some people in this group, I've had experience with this one, right now based in Bavaria, Germany, okay? There's a physical incarnation in Bavaria, Germany. I've actually seen the house in our vision on the Nephilim. I know Aaron and I have talked about that, but these are a result of a, of a, of a hybrid breeding experiment that went horribly wrong about 4,800 years ago. These ones here, by the way, are one of the main ones you're dealing with today. And I just want to show you these ones here are the reason why you cannot fight this in the physical. I'll, I was told this one over and over last year. So that's why you cannot take this from the physical. King David, one of the great um, spiritual men in his last words says this, he that rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of God, which I'm sure we all agree we'd love to see. Then he says, but the sons of Belial shall be all as thorns thrust away. They cannot be taken with hands. Now, the sons of Belial, when you do some research to find out who they are, these guys are seriously bad motherfuckers. They're seriously bad ones. These ones, are the ones that do two things. They bear false witness, which means they get you in court, they make up laws out of their ass, and then they get you convicted of them to take your property, take your livelihood, take your assets off you. And the second thing that they, and so they steal from you, and they also basically get you effectively lose your life physically or economically or spiritually, okay? So whenever you read this, it's about taking finance, corruption and leadership, and using the law especially is what they do. So notice these words, they cannot be taken with hands. You've got to fight them in the spiritual. And you read this here because it says they've got to be burned with fire and it's a spiritual fire. And when you go to Ephesians, the scroll of Ephesians, which gives you a clue about spiritual warfare, you got this here. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, it's not fucking governments that we're fighting. We're fighting higher level spiritual principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness. So we're dealing with higher dimensional frequencies. 
Tina Turner worked that out. Miley Cyrus knows that. Bill Gates knows this. He wouldn't dare disobey his masters. He's smarter than all of you. Sorry. Um, he knows that Satan and Lucifer, he does what he's told. And so how much more should we be saying, right, let's get ourselves connected with the brotherhood, with the alliance, learn the spiritual power so we can take out their fucking spirits that are working with these guys. Because believe you me, when we've done this and we've taken the spirits out behind these kind of things, I couldn't remember, I had the legal practice board guys come after me for three years to try and destroy my career, okay? And I tried everything. I had the best lawyers, I was a fighter. And for the first time I realized I was in trouble. You know, that was the first time um, I, I knew I was in trouble. Once I went and was able to take up the spirit behind this thing, I literally, as soon as I could take up the spirit behind this thing, do you know, within a matter of days, they changed investigator and the whole thing was, was dealt with smoothly. I did this when I got tax audited. I took out the spirits behind the audit. And as soon as you take out the spirits behind these things, they can't get near you. Okay. So I'm sure many of you by now at least would be thinking, okay, this is probably sounding a lot better than trying to fight some government who I know I've got no chance against. Um, the best enemies when you can take them out before they can even get near you. So yeah, there's various ones here. Um, those who read John McAfee's one, he talks about Cain. And these are some really seriously bad dark masters, by the way, or demons. Um, Asherah or Ashtaroth is um, the one, the goddess of fertility, they did child sacrifice. Um, yeah, the final one I'll chuck up here, and this one is Jude 1. So this is what John McAfee quotes. And John McAfee is the guy who's got this video when he says, I shit you not, and he teaches you about the cryptocurrency. But he quotes directly from his scripture. Woe to them, for they've gone in the way of Cain. Cain hated his brother. He used murder and anger and attack through anger. So if you've got anger in your life, if you've got murder and hatred in your heart, or got that hologram from past lives or current lifetimes, or oaths of Freemasonry or whatever, they can go after you through, the, through Dark Master Cain. Ran greedily after the era of Balaam. Balaam was a, was a brilliant sorcerer who went against Moses, against Pharaoh of Egypt. He was known, one of the greatest Dark Master sorcerers, was able to replicate incredible miracles and perished in the rebellion, gainsaying means rebellion of Korah, who goes against higher authority. So that's why the things to avoid are the spirit of murder, and Jesus and the esoteric said murder is any kind of a hatred where you hate people and not work, walk in love and forgiveness. This is about personal gain and greedily extorting and going after money for your own personal gain other than the higher work. And this is direct rebellion, a rebellious heart. And the difference between rebelling against um, wicked authority, but I'm just talking about that kind of thing. So anyway, Aaron, mate, no doubt you've got some wisdom to share. I just wanted to kind of hit a few things and, you know, Aaron just says here, I've helped, you know, Fernie to Green Mason. I'll talk about this stuff. Freemasonry is falling apart. They're losing influence and power. They're weak, broken. People are walking away. Yeah, look, no doubt I've heard that. And that's why it's a lot of these groups behind these ones are the problem, Aaron. So I do agree with you. I think that many of these things are a distraction. Yeah, definitely. One so of what do you um, think of what I said? Another... Any... Yeah, go on. Oh, what you said was awesome. Um, a lot of that resonated with me. Um, even a lot of the stuff that you covered, um, especially, you know, talking about the Nephilim and things like that. That's, that's what you learn in Freemasonry. Uh, especially as you rise the ranks, you start doing rituals, you start being attuned to higher states of consciousness through these rituals, these hermetic rituals that alter your state of consciousness to an alien, uh, intelligence where these things physically start manifesting and speaking through lodges and uh one thing about draconian law is um draconians being uh an extra dimensional race yep uh actually the ones who are governing the laws through these freemasonic institutions so Wow, really? To put it in layman's terms, when you're going through your 
process of ascension through the Masonic pillars. Um, it's very much like a, a Tesla type of thing. So you are seated, you're in between two pillars, Joaquin and Boaz, which are in the Bible. Um, the two pillars out in front of King Solomon's temple. And they recite Kabbalah incantations. And what happens, and it, it's, it's scary shit. Your frequencies go to a higher level. Like they literally are tuning you with magic to a higher consciousness. It's like a hack. They hack into your consciousness and they enlighten it so to speak that's where the, the whole enlightenment comes from because it's a ascension of consciousness and at first you're led to believe it's a you know it's a very spiritual thing it's a very prominent thing it's a very privileged thing um until the encounters with the the demonic realm start to happen until your whole friend base becomes paladins and druids and witches and if you get in trouble in a court of law you don't have you know you don't go to your court case and have a, a duty solicitor or you don't pay for a lawyer somebody shows up on your court day gives you a card doesn't tell you who they are and represents you and they're members of uh the bar law association if you'd know that warren yeah i do it's run by the Knights Templar and Knights City of Malta London, and the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. City yeah. London and Satan. Yeah. yeah. So I actually had that experience um, when I was traveling to a Masonic Summit in 2000 and I think it was 2017. Um, I had a, a folding knife that I had for work when I was a landscaper in my wallet and I forgot about it. I went through customs and anyone would know um, under the 2011 Terror Act, if you're caught with a weapon at an airport, that's an extreme charge. That's basically like it falls under a terrorist type of um, law code. And so, as I said, when I showed up to my case for having a weapon in public. By the way, what happened, I had my rings on and the federal police came over um, and they've got, they've got people in these places too. All I was told I had to do was show them my ring and say a certain code word and ask them to go to their, you know, manager or whoever's in charge of their division with that code. And I said, just mention um, my rank. And my rank was a Knights Templar in the Masonic, um, which then after that, I rose to what's called the bloodline, which is an Illuminati higher order that most Freemasons don't even know about. And that's because I have three generations of Royal Arch grandfathers. So I had a, a special privilege when I rose in rank that I basically skipped all the, the lower level stuff and was appointed into a high position and started, I literally started living that eyes wide shut life, mansion parties, travel, um, you know, like literally expenses paid for trips, everything like the high life, the Illuminati, yeah. VIP really? life. Yeah. Yeah, I've got photos on my Instagram of like some of these houses that we went to where they conduct these rituals and yeah, what you see in movies, it doesn't even scratch the surface of the types of people that are running these um, organizations, especially here too. Uh, it's actually the Queen's cousin who runs Freemasonry Australia and I've met him. Um, I don't know exactly what to touch on because there's so much within within my experience. So, if you guys say something in the chat, I will I'll address that because I could go off on different tangents and all sorts of things with masonry and Illuminati and stuff like that. I'd rather, 
you know, correct and educate people on what they've heard. Because a lot of people always come to me with, you know, how did you get out? Blah, blah, blah. Don't they kill you? Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm still friends with the assassins who would be sent to kill me. Literally. I, they still have respect for me. So when you're in certain positions and when you meet certain people, yeah. And um, I'm not what's considered a, a whistleblower because what I haven't done, I haven't divulged any rituals. I haven't divulged any actual secrets because all this stuff that I've said, you can find out online. The stuff about the, the Kabbalah rituals, the Ascension stuff, it's, it's all online. There's been whistleblowers a hundred times already done it. That's why masonry is also falling apart. Um, Notre Dame, when it burnt down, is owned by the Masonic Knights Templars. What they did, and it was exposed, about a week before that fire, they removed all the, the ancient artifacts and the history and all the, the knowledge and the things that mattered from the inside were all moved out. And then all of a sudden, the fire. So they're, they're going broke. Everyone in the secret societies know it. Um, they're too proud to admit it. But that was an insurance job. It was also not just an insurance job. It was a sign that Freemasonry is falling apart because it was caused by saboteurs within um, Masonry who are Knights of Malta. They're basically deception agents who influence the insurance job, which has now been a big, big controversial thing to basically shut down Masonry. And it's, they're also targeting the monarchy. As you'll start seeing too, um, Prince Charles is now talking out about COVID-19. Um, some of the royal family was sick. They're, t they're literally targets because they didn't go with the NWO. So what happened, I knew about the NWO takeover in 2018. Actually, I knew a lot of the stuff that's coming up in 2018, 15 months ago. We were talking about these things that were coming, um, the lockdowns, everything. We had inside information. Hence why I was posting things and two weeks later they were happening on Facebook and people were just like, what the fuck? It's like, I knew about this stuff. I was slowly trying to like show people this is the new world order. And this is only phase one. This is a test. This is literally a test. It's a testing phase to see... Exactly. How people are going to either comply, rebel, or just, you know, sit on their hands and do nothing. And those are the people that they want. Um, the next thing too, with the executive orders that have just been signed, because Trump signed them, that affects us because it's United Nations. Um, so the person who actually mentored me, he used to go to these G20 summits and stuff like that with the government. And he has all the insider information. He told us a lot of stuff about that. Um, the G20 is basically when all the world leaders came to Australia, they did their little congregation and they said, this is the plans for the new world order. We're gonna usher it in this way. Then what we have, we have the G50, which is a, a council. And that council also has our world leaders, United Nations. Um, but what it also has, has members of other countries too, who are meant to be opposing. So everyone's in on it. Everyone's in bed together. China and America are best friends. Australia is like the little, the little brother who does whatever America does. Um, yeah, we're pretty much not even our own country anymore, to be honest. It's interesting. When you said about the phase two, Aaron, because, yeah, that's what I said. Tell me if I'm on track or what you yep. know. I'd love you to refine yep. it. Because I, I get shown things. You know this stuff. I get shown things in visions, and I've been pretty accurate so far. I yeah, definitely. Saw, uh, I saw a phase one test. I said this six weeks ago. The and, and I saw this is going to work out who's serious, who's not, yep. who's complying who should be watched and who should just be left alone as good compliers. Phase yep. two is going to be a lot worse. This is where we're going to really hit the, the horrible pandemic, which will probably come from 
a mixture of 5G and various other things that will activate um, viruses and implants that are in people that are going to absolutely send people crazy and cause no end of shit. That's what I was showing. Am I, am I close? Pretty much exactly right, yeah. Um, well, the phase, phase two part is Operation Paperclip, which was basically a secret program to take mad scientists out of Nazi Germany, relocate them to America and continue their experiments. And they developed what's called Lyme disease. Now, what's happening in America, you can do your research on this, Lyme disease is becoming a more and more prevalent thing from people and food. They've linked it to food now. And what you were saying about the implants and that is, is yeah, it's exactly what it is. They are parasitic nanotech robots and they're patented as a nanotechnology and chemtrails patent lines up with what they are. So what they're doing, they're literally spraying the world with these pesticide parasite things. They're going into our livestock. So all meat is corrupted, plant life is corrupted, um, crops are corrupted, everything, everything. They're everywhere. So when they do these chemtrail sprays, my friend in Sydney, actually, on a night, I was told people should not go out for 24 hours. Um, that was on the 8th of this month. He went out and he told me, he's actually also an ex-Mason too. He said the next day when he went out, his eyes were itchy and he started feeling like a, a rash on his body, but there was no visible signs of anything. And I was like, dude, that's, that's the chemtrail thing. That's, that's the symptoms. Um, so what you do, if you do have these symptoms too, and what also kills this technology, colloidal silver, borax, and Epsom salts in a bath. That's oh, how you yeah. also remove them. Um, I'll write this down in the, the chat write too. This down, yeah, because we do stuff. Actually, Aaron, also, I might just quickly introduce you to my son, William, because yeah. William is a, not a shaman. He sees energy very clearly. In fact, even clearer than me often. And I used to, I've used him as a shaman to, to warn me and see things. So William, even, even now of me speaking, he told me visions he was seeing about Canberra and how they've actually got specific attacks coming against us in Canberra right now. So just share what you, what you just sent me in private chat. Yeah. So hi, Owen. So really, hey. yep. It's nice, it's nice to meet you. You too. Uh, so yeah, really what I, what I was seeing was as we were talking, all of a sudden it was going normal, but then next minute, I just, I don't know, I just felt this heaviness and tiredness, which was, which was very familiar. It hasn't happened mm -hmm. in a while, hasn't happened for a while in these webinars because, because while we, when we were doing that anointing and oil and that, during that stage, I remember that's when in the webinars we were, I was getting this heaviness and this tiredness and dark clouds happening and it's, yeah. it's just it's just hit again and it's happening over everybody here kind of putting putting people to sleep so they don't hear the messages yeah and, i get you and putting yeah, that's yeah. what happens with technology yeah. yeah putting all kinds of implants and they negative frequencies yeah that's right you're right yes and i've been feeling i've i've been i was like i was swarmed with it it's like i'm being suffocated in it yeah also this lockdown thing is also it's teaching us to yeah be, re be reliant on being at home yes and uh, yes with this lockdown it's very much for lights because it's kind of intensifying it by 10 times and making it a exactly lot worse right. which is why it's more important than ever to get this stuff sorted exactly right i agree also, and, so Aaron, what do you say about lockdown um you're saying that just i'm interested in your perspective so what's your perspective you're saying to try and intensify the mental oppression yeah basically basically to drive people crazy it, it's it's yeah, it's okay. like it's like a joke it's like fu funny to you know treat us like rats in cages and it's so just like, it's just another form of mockery yeah civil mm. unrest great civil unrest yeah exactly right that's exactly what it is and then they've got the kettling which i mentioned two yeah. weeks ago the fake riots um if you look up kettling kettling is a, a military thing um taught to military police riot control all that to actually incite riots. So they incite the riots. 
and it started happening in France. And then it's it's going to start happening everywhere because it's a kettle yep. thing. So it's not civil unrest. Oh, it's, mate, hey. it, Sorry, it is man. to an extent, but it's manipulating civil unrest because people are already oh. fed up, sick of it. All they got to do is hit the spark inside a riot and then everyone falls for it. And, and then, then they get you're a target. <laughs> then you yeah, get put on the list. In, and then they can bring in martial law, exactly. Exactly right. And they do it in spots where they've got facial recognition technology and they've got people watching and monitoring the NSA, watching every single person who's involved. Yeah, that's, what I, that's exactly what I thought. And uh, it's interesting because 18 months ago, um, and you'd know how they use names and codings, Aaron, and um, over where we live, there's a suburb yeah. near me called Belia. And yep. I remember going, holy shit, that's fucking Belial. Cause Belial. The <laughs> definition. And then near Belial, they got Murdoch, and they got a hospital murder, like murder. And then yep. they got Coburn, Cockburn, and I burned your cock. I thought, fuck, they're going to turn this place into a concentration camp. Now, yep. I told this 16 months ago. Of course, people looked at me like, have you just lost your marbles? But I went around anointing the oil and yep. doing stuff like that. And oh, they were not. I, I got pretty hit pretty hard about them when I did that. But yeah, I mean, literally in WA, all the places I've anointed with oil, it's like nothing's changed. It's like it's so fucking protected, mate. Like we walk Definitely. around the beaches, everything is normal. They can't get near it. And um, oh, look, I know they. I mean, I had to, I had to work my ass off to shut every door in my mind, every holographic thing. But yeah, now I want. That's why I wanted to do this as well to teach people about what we do. Because what if we can fucking get all these high hills and get these seven high places and more memorials cleared out across yeah. all the city of Australia, we can fucking stop most of what it's doing here. You know, we can't. That's right. We fucking yeah. stop these motherfuckers. They also put on, um, this is a, a Masonic thing, they put on war memorials. You know how they've got the arch? It's symbolic for, for a gateway. So all the arches all around the world, they're symbolic for gateways. And um, apparently, in Druidry, these gateways are, so when they conduct a, a ritual, I said this in the um, the 99% group, I had a lot of people come up against me saying, that's a conspiracy theory, blah, 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 whatever. Um, on ley lines that they have all across the globe, they've made these sacred geometric pattern things that look like crop circles. And what they are, they're grids, and that's where Druids meet in the hundreds of thousands to go and conduct these energy rituals to like harness prime energy from that exact place because that's where like a pure energy grid is and they do their magic on these things. And I had this one guy and he was just, just a complete ignorant twat um, trying to contest me about it. So I provided all the information that goes back all the way to the ancient Druidry. Um, with the ley lines and stuff like that. And he had nothing to say after that. Oh. But, um, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn actually have been posting on Facebook recently to join their ascension, their planet ritual, um, which is interesting because the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, obviously being a secret society, wouldn't invite outsiders to anything of any sort. So that's strange. I think it's kind of trying to slowly indoctrinate people into the new one world religion. No, but I love it. Hey, Christine, can you jump on and share that about Albany? Because Christine is someone who's one of my clients, Aaron, and she's like, oh, she's awesome. She's like, you know, she's a grandmother, but she's a badass among badasses. And yep. yeah, we were down in Albany 18 months ago and we cleared all this. We went to the war memorials and um, we, we, and we, we found all the Satanist places and hit these places like really hard. Yep. And um, yeah, so Christine, just introduce yourself to Aaron and share. Oh, hello everyone. Um, hello. Uh, I would say that Warren and the boys did all the clearing first off, uh, but it was very interesting because I had nothing, had had nothing to do with this sort of thing. It was, I think the first time that they had been down here. And so, First of all, they um, did the oil and salt in the water around the harbour 
And then we went to all the high places. Albany is situated between two hills. And um, one of the hills is got a war memorial on it. And there's a, uh, a series of steps and uh, round uh, flat places on the way up. And as we walked up there, um, Warren was describing what all the symbols meant. And one of my daughters was there with us and she actually couldn't even walk up there. She burst into tears and we discovered that there were uh, many souls there that needed to be released. And when Warren and the boys did the um, releasing, um, she was actually able to walk up those stairs, which was really interesting. And at the top of the hill above the memorial there was a plaque with a map which apparently described the whole area that the um, dark side I guess had taken control of and so we went then we went to the other mountain and did the same thing and at uh, memorials in town and so forth and it was really interesting because we we actually don't live here all the time normally um, but we go backwards and forwards. And after that, I actually noticed a difference in the energy in the town. And the interesting thing is that um, my husband and I have chosen to relocate here what, during this lockdown. And um, it's as if nothing's changed. There are some shops shut, but we can still go to the beaches. My husband's a gardener. He can go and um, to the to the place to get his fertiliser, any things he needs to garden, all that sort of thing. We had people come in, drop off supplies for our garden. Um, behind us is builders building a house. And this, it's been remarkable when I think of the people who shut down, locked out inside their houses. Uh, the other day we had some, um, we had a thing on our car, you have to drive it so far at a certain rev to clean out some filter or other. I'm not a mechanical person. Uh, but anyway, so we set off and went for a drive for half an hour and came back. Nobody questioned us at all. There's takeaway. There's, I mean, there's definitely been changes, but um, it's, it's been quite remarkable. And it shows that um, we have also done a lot of work here. Um, we have retreats here and people come here and do a lot of personal work, which also clears their karma and clears them. So we've done huge amounts of work personally here. Um, so Grace and other people have been here and I do believe that all the work that we've done has definitely helped in this part of the state. Amazing. Well, like she wrote, yeah, Lexi, I had to kick her ass. She's one of the members who works with us. And Lexi's great because she will go after getting... Oh, and I'm sure you know about how they do those ritual murders. And in their terror, they trap the souls in a spiritual prison. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lexi, yep. yeah, Lexi would go and actually release these souls from Dundon. And she did an attack on the Black Pope. Bit of a, a bit of a silly girl. And, of course, she almost got killed from doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, that's what's coming up to Walpurgis. Um, and Beltane and because we're in the, the new age of Aquarius what happens in paganism they step their game up which is what's happening with the mass graves all that that's all that's all a part of this the higher energy of also the dark side they're also stepping their game up so there's, oh. there's going to be a lot more death um, the virus isn't even any it's it's just a cleaning methodology they're using it's just like another plague it's just history repeating itself um I know. what's what's to come with the the 5g thing and another i always cite military patents and stuff like that because when you've got a patent for something you know it's a it's a authorized technology recognized by government um so I, i'm actually fortunate to have a lot of contacts in high military spetsnaz russia um because of my stepdad, I've still got contacts from the special forces in Russia and even older guys who are now retired, but they were working on this technology like 
30 years ago. Um, and so they've confirmed these things. And what's in place now with 5G, people are freaking out about the 5G um, as a radioactive thing. Yes, that is definitely prevalent. But the actual thing with 5G is it acts with chemtrails too, because chemtrails stay in the atmosphere, they fall to earth, but the nanobots uh, also stay in the atmosphere because they fly. And recently there's been a guy, uh, Johnny Five, he was on YouTube, he had a following of like eight or nine million. Um, he had video evidence he had a special camera and he filmed these chemtrail clouds and he could go up so close to almost like a, a microscopic view, which was also like a translucent filter he had on the camera. You can see these things flying around like little alien insects. And um, I'm pretty sure he's started reloading all this stuff again, but they shut him down uh, on YouTube. He had close to like, nine million followers or something um he's he was basically a, a military tech uh whistleblower what's his name johnny five um he also captured a whole bunch of them from all around the place he went around the city and collected them and he put them under microscopes and he got special lasers um he had them on the dish he shows evidence that these things move around like they're little alien bots. They have, they look like, say you've got like a cat and the cat's left its hair on the couch or something, you know, and you, you, you scrape it off and you've got fibers that have been taken off the couch. If you had a ball of cat hair in your hand, it looks like that. It looks like these little fibrous hair strands. But what they are, when he put them under the microscope, they're literally robots. Some weird alien technology. And on further zoom through a microscope, they look like fucking demons. They've got teeth, they've got evil eyes, they've got like this demonic energy to them. It's supernatural. These things aren't just... I think it falls under pharmacaea which in the Bible um, is relevant to basically sorcery through all means. So what was it called? Pharmacaea. pharmacaea. Oh, if that's pharmacy. Yeah. yeah exactly that. right. Exactly right. <laughs> Pharmaceutical industry is, is black magic. Um, oh. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the comments. Johnny five, number five. Johnny five. Yeah, have a look yeah. at this one, Aaron. I showed you this one before, but I'll show you a couple of scriptures, mate. Um, this is the one, the day before, you put that picture of Contagion Up, a 2011 movie of the mass graves in New York. I got the yep. scripture and told it to my family. Yep. At that time, says the law, they shall bring up the bones of the kings of Judah, because these guys know about bones. And if you go to any war memorials and you see those little weird stones in formation, they've got their bodies buried under all of them. They've got the bones. Yeah, exactly. There. Exactly. So, yeah. They should bring up the bones. So I, so like I said to you, what they've like done. It's like a temple I, of death. They're killing innocent kids who are of the highest seed. They're taking their bones and chucking them in those mass graves along with the coronavirus because in that way, they're fulfilling the scripture. They shall bring up the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of his princes, the bones of the priests and the prophets. So all of the higher people. That's why it's the Satanists love to kill Christians or higher believers or any spiritual yes. people. And then they'll spread them before the sun, the moon, and the host of heaven, like Baal, Ashtaroth, Lucifer, yep. and all those guys, whom they've loved and whom they've served, and who they've walked and whom they've sought. In other words, because people have done love and light, and they've refused to follow higher law, they've been given over to them. So this is a really shitty scripture, but this is what's happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're, uh, they're basically like temples and monuments to... To these yeah. deities and gods and things. And look at this. It says, there will be a time of trouble. It's not, in fact, some translations had a great tribulation, such as never was seen since it was a nation at the same time. And when you yeah. read it, it actually says it will be the worst time in the history of the earth. Yeah. And you know one thing that troubled me, Aaron? I thought, 
But Earth's the shittiest place. I mean, all the horrible stuff that's happened, how could it be worse? And that was when I realized, oh, shit. If they implant people, at least when you got tortured before, mm. you may have your body hurt, but you still got your soul. With this yeah, new that's right. Mate, they've got your soul as well as your body. That's fucking yeah, that's awful. It. Yep. That's what this nanotech does because it also changes our DNA. Oh, um, these, these things self-replicate too. So it, first of all, what you'll see with Morgellons um, disease, which at first when people were coming to doctors, they'd have lesions on their skin. They'd have these fibrous wire looking things coming out of their skin. And they're going into doctors and doctors are saying, you're crazy, it's a, it's a, you're delusional. Because obviously they're told to. Um, science ruled it out as a, a mental disorder. And then about eight years later, the CDC confirmed that na nanotechnology was a real thing, that Morgellons was a real thing. And then all the um, information about Lyme disease, Morgellons, chemtrails, uh, and Operation Paperclip came out because it became declassified. So first of all, they, they'll make you suffer. They'll make you feel crazy. Then they'll tell you it's real. And that's the sick way that these the people work. It's like laughing, laughing, laughing. All right, we'll give you the truth now. And that's how they do everything. That's what they're doing now, lockdowns. It's, it's laughing at us, driving us crazy. Then they're going to do the next phase, which was the executive orders, um, which pretty much means Trump isn't in power because FEMA overrides Trump now. FEMA's executive orders uh, now control global emergency as they're the federal emergency response unit. They're also uh, World Health Organization's puppet masters. Um, and another thing that's sick and twisted is they're taking the homeless just like they would the Jews to FEMA camps and probably incinerating them. Uh, that's why the homeless are vanishing. I'm not sure if many people will notice, but that's been happening since about 2014. Same with the safe injection clinics, pharmacare, slowly poisoning people giving them a safe place to do their drugs. Nope, you're an undesirable. We're going to slowly poison you. Um, yeah, they've just got these death facilities everywhere. Literally. Goodness me. It's kind of, I was aware, I was aware of all of the um, concentration camps. Well, I looked into it and I concluded in America, I knew there was plenty of these buggers. And um, yeah. yeah, look, I mean, even now you probably would, you're probably you would know they're conditioning people in WA they announced Optus Oval as a as a as a basically a health emergency centre, Rottnest Island, and a couple of other places. And I kind of thought I had a bit of a laugh. Yeah, the the sports stadiums. Your mind, your pants, yeah. yeah. Actually, is Max on? It better is be. Mac He's not. I'll kick his ass. Um, well, what what happened years ago? We actually did research. This is way before anything. When we were younger, when Max was still in uni. Um, we found out because we used to watch a lot of the conspiracy theory stuff get together. Uh, Rabina train station on the Gold Coast and the stadium linked up is actually like a fortified, like heavily fortified holding ground for, for FEMA. It's basically like a, I can't even explain it. So, the, for, for what is a soccer field has heavily guarded tower cameras that cover all angles, has barbed wire fencing, has unclimbable fences. Uh, and the only thing that they're protecting is a train yard. I don't think they'd need such a heavily fortified type of facility. And there's only one way in, one way out. So when you come in, those gates only open one way. But why would they have on a soccer field, four sets of cameras at each corner, not even facing the train station. They face the inside of the soccer field. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Right across from the sports stadium, which is right next to a train yard, which means if this whole 
FEMA thing does happen. It's a holding facility and then it's a transport facility to take people to FEMA camps. Which is, that's old news. You could have, you could have watched documentaries in 2013 about that. Now it's happening. Now the sports stadiums and things are being announced as testing zones. So soon people can be told because the executive orders have been signed that if FEMA announces, well, what they don't announce, they just come in to your city, make a big announcement. You now must leave your house, go to this place, get vaccinated or be arrested. And that's how mandatory vaccinations are going to happen. People don't realize. They think, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. When you're forced from your home by military command, you're going to do it. That's, that's another thing that a lot of people are being up in arms about not getting the microchip. It's, it's almost going to be impossible to escape. So that's, that's a giant, that's one main concern of mine. Like I don't, I don't care about the black magic and stuff like that because that could be combated and I've already met the right people now connecting with you, Warren, knowing that us types are aligning and we're waking people up too. Um, and also being a part of the high level magic too, I have an advantage because I know how to use it against. Um, yeah, what am I doing it? Okay. Yeah. So I just want to read a real quick, just like a little paragraph of one of the books from the Black Magic that I had. Just in this yeah. little thing, you'll see how dark it is. So this is a ritual from what is called necromantic sorcery. Um, this is called the Skull of Patricide. The Lords of Noctis is not an initiation, but a crucial turning point for necromancer. You must turn against your spiritual mother and father and kill him. To be clear, you must not be your real mother or father unless they are your spiritual parents as well. You will be committing an act so unholy it will scar your entire vessel, making it impossible to be possessed by anything blight or angelic ever again. Moreover, they must give you their blessing willingly. To obtain these things, one may prove to be quite a task. However, the power of it exceeds any you may imagine. That's just a little tiny, tiny thing of how dark those rituals are. And to answer other questions, the reason I left was because of the amount of ritual abuse I saw, especially against women. Um, it, it was disgusting. Yeah, even against myself, um, ritualistic things, having to give blood, cut ourselves, drink blood, spit blood on people, wear spit, spit blood on Bibles, burn Bibles. It's it's sick, sick and twisted, perverted depravity. So, really? Oh, you have no idea. The whole goat, goat, blood drinking thing. That's nothing. That's a, that's a walk in the park for the rituals that go on, on the higher levels. Yeah. This is very much confirming what um, Dr. Rebecca Brown says, Aaron. So what I might do is um. Just do a couple of things. I want to show you something now. Um, so look, really very simply, like I said, I just wanted to get things going tonight and open people up to it. Um, but thank you so much, Aaron. I think you and I are going to talk a lot and, and all this because, mate, yeah. I think we're going to yeah. have some fun. We will just deal with this stuff. A um, couple of things I'm going to mention. Now, what I've done here is I've created this group. Okay. So if you, who, I'm sure who here wants to be part of this anyway? and actually learn this stuff and learn how to deal with this stuff. I'm presuming at least two or three of you or something, maybe a few more. Cause yeah, look, people are asking about love and light and about God. Look, obviously there's higher laws and there was a way out of this because one thing they told me is there is a way out. Um, and they showed me the way out of the mark very clearly. I honestly don't even have 0.1% fear. I but that's where I'm at with this. Cause I've been shown the way out and look, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Seeing as I'm really in that place, there was a little bit of a selfish part of me at one stage. I just said, look, I know how to get out of this. I said, can't I just use what I know, get out of this one and leave everyone else to be idiots, you know? That was kind of my attitude. And I was told, well, 
you know, if you basically, if we done that with you, um, I said, yeah, look, fair point. So, look, I do know how to get out of this. I don't have the slightest fear of this one. And I'm willing to help those who are serious. If you're not serious, um, you know, you won't come back. And if you kind of fuck around here, I'll kick you out anyway. And Darren, I mean, what Aaron and I get on well is he deliberately, you know, kicks people out. He gives them shit. And I'm the same. I just have zero tolerance for fuck which right now. Yeah. Like any, anyone who basically starts calling me conspiracy theorist, you know, I, I just deliberately insult them because... I just think you've got to grow up and, you know, basically pull your head in. Because right now, if you don't learn to toughen up, you're going to be taking it. You're going to get left behind. You're going to learn the hard way. Yeah, That's you'll be sure. Satan's bitch. You know, you'll be yeah. Satan's little microchip bitch. You can do what you want with. So I have better things to do with deal with idiots. But if you've got friends or people, and I emphasize who are as keen as you are and hungry, they can definitely join this group and come along. You know, don't don't send you know, and if they're idiots, they'll get kicked out of the group. I'm not really gonna be giving people chances. Yeah. So it's And I, as I said in the other group too, where I invited people and thanks for coming. I saw you some of you um on the chat. Um yeah. we're not like we're not preaching, we're not here to preach, we're not trying to force you to believe what we say. No. And it's it's not just another, you know, evangelist Bible bashing talk group like people can ask no. things and we'll give you information if you don't believe in something that we say that's fine because you, you don't understand it but if you want to be educated on it i can definitely help with that yeah no absolutely and look the main thing is it will be run in a lot of order and that's one of the things i like with um you know people i'm dealing with i mean one thing i've learned is that the reason i have a zero tolerance on my own facebook page is i'm like if, you, if I came to your house, I'd treat your rules of your house with respect. And if you come into my house and did a dump on our floor, I'd kick you straight out. So if someone comes onto my Facebook page and does a dump on my page, I'll kick them straight out. So I'm a little bit like this here. Yeah. And even in this group, it always has to be a leader. So that's me. I'm leading this group right now. Um, I've asked Darren to assist me. And then there'll be others who are different points in time I'll ask to share. So right now it'll be run pretty strictly just to kind of make sure we got order. But yes, we definitely want people to share stuff and that kind of stuff. But yeah, look, keep in mind, and look, I like to be pretty honest. I mean, as I see it, but people can always start their own groups and do their own thing if they want to. Um, and this group will have some good order. So yeah, look, Aaron, I'm keen to talk to you more about it, you know, afterwards or tomorrow if you open to it. Yeah, definitely. I've also got a few other people who um, I spoke to, I mentioned about this, they couldn't make it tonight, but they said they're really interested in getting involved well oh, that's great i mean I, I think we've recorded this so if we have i'll get a recording to you cool. um yeah look what i want to do just to finish off i'm going to give you guys a bit of a treat to thank you for coming one of the things i learned from professor hertak and working with some very high level shamans is these are what's called higher frequency codes that can very quickly clear out stuff so if you focus on this code and really breathe it in through your third eye or whatever else and just feel it come into you it's basically what we're doing is just to kind of how I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a command. Okay. And it's just going to clear out any high priority imprints. And I do, and I'll follow a very strict process because, you know, things can easily interfere with these things. So what I'm going to be doing is just doing a very strict process, um, which I'll be following through to make sure we're working with masters that are aligned with what I call Christ and not the dark. So just breathe in. And just allow yourself just to relax. Um, can you see the code yet? Okay, yep. Yeah. This is a very high vibrational code, by the way. Um, this is something that, oh my gosh, it accelerated me quite exponentially. So just breathe in through the nose for four. And just hold for a couple of counts. And then breathe out through the mouth for about six to eight counts. Breathe in through the nose for four. And hold. And breathe out for eight counts. And just feel yourself connected right now to your earth chakra and feel your crown chakra connected to Father Heaven, to Christ, to the higher Father Heaven. 
So there's like a white central vertical channel connecting you straight through, through your whole energy field. <clears throat> Those of you who are sensitive might be feeling a vortex or whirlwind around you, which is the Earth's energy is being activated. And some of you might feel a golden white crystalline pyramid, which you can see coming down and just kind of settling over you and over the whole group. And a white seed crystal pyramid just over your pineal gland or third eye. Arcturian technology. Wow. And now what we're doing is we just give thanks to Archangels Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael and Michael and we invite them in. Archangel Uriel to the north, Michael to the south, Raphael to the east and Gabriel to the west. And just allow your hearts to feel their love and just connect back with your love towards these gorgeous beings who are here to serve us at this time and really help us. The elite actually fear. Yeah. And let's just also give thanks to the Order of John, the Order of Enoch, and all those aligned with the Order of Melchizedek, and with the Shekinah universe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Council of Nine. And all those aligned with the two men, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. And feel them all present because they're here right now. Very grateful for everyone being here. And you'll feel the increase in the energy. I'm sure you're feeling it, Aaron. Definitely. They're flooding in. And just keep letting the love flow in your heart and just send it out. And just keep your eyes focused with your mental energy focused in the center of your head, <laughs> right in the center of the code. Some of you would see the code pulsing. And some of you might even be feel drawn right into the central vortex of the indigo kind of pink light code, which is 15 chakra magenta code. Yes, and especially they don't like what Archangel Michael one little bit. No, they don't. And he's here with a smile on his face right now. So now I want to just do a code. Activating all eds on the first three levels and up the levels. Merging in the opposite, mirror opposite eds and bringing in the Christ opposite eds up the levels. Cleansing demons, thought forms, soul fragments, personalities, values, etc. on all levels. Closing portals, wormholes, anything of that kind which no longer serve each and every one in the highest good right now and the highest frequency in the order of Melchizedek, according to the order of Babaji, the Ketswa, and the, and the Kriya Yoga masters now. Clearing all our attachments and the source which no longer serves each and every person, the highest priority. It's right now in each and everyone's throat and third eye chakra, especially now. And just get ready for the transmission. I'm hearing a frequency all around me. What are you hearing? It's actually a low... All I can say is it, it feels angelic. Like when I hear frequencies from technology yeah. or from Earth, it's a draining one. It's one that makes you tired. It's one that gives you headaches. This is like a... Wow. I can't describe it, but it's positive. Oh, yeah. If you can feel the joy, there's a lot of joy and a lot of singing, Aaron. I can feel it in my heart. They're cleaning out a lot of debris out of people right now. They've completely sealed off all the all of the stuff going on there.
you're here to show people they're really here to work with you. Yeah. And in the higher frequencies. Definitely. And I just feel them saying they love all of you. It's quite interesting. It's not the kind of message I normally give. I'm pretty militant. For those who know me, they just want to say they just love all of you. They love you with all their hearts. They want you to feel their love. Because if you feel their love, you will feel the love, feel your heart. That will heal your souls faster than anything they said. Before. That's, so that's what it is. It's a, it's a love energy. That's what it is. Yes. Definitely. They're wanting you all to feel their love. It's going to heal you from childhood stuff, everything. Just feel their love. And do you know what I mean? Like, you know, and that's what my daughter is raised on that music with her dad playing, you know. Yeah, you're feeling it, Denny. Oh no, I'll tell you what I, I'll tell you what, yeah. I, but there is no conversation, Ali. She won't open up. She... Oh, she's opening. <laughs> That's funny, I think she pushed the wrong button. Um, yeah, just keep feeling the... So what I'm going to do now is I felt they've actually cleared a whole lot of things out in a hurry. I'm, I'm quite amazed how fast that happened. So now I'm going to do an upgrade for you. What's called a solar upgrade. It wasn't until I... I'm going to do, that's funny. I'm going to do a soul upgrade. Okay. So and she, and he actually did say... So I'm just going to breathe in, um, basically. Breathe in your third eye. Also, another thing I'll mention quick, the third eye thing where people say it's against God is not true. That's what the Vatican's put into Bibles to stop you from ascending. Well, the true Bible doesn't say that at all. In fact, Jesus says that your light is in your eye and, he, and, the, and the translation is your third eye. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the New Age teachings where it says it, it goes against God and it's not... It's not uh, Thanks for clarifying that. That's yeah. really useful. Because there, there are a lot of um, Christians who have been saved who are, you know, they're against opening their third eye and say it's, it's all evil, it's all linked to witchcraft. And it's actually the way that you connect with God. So Exactly. So what I might do, Aaron, I'm going to just do a soul upgrade so you can enjoy this. So yep. just feel this coming into you. And just what I want everyone to do, imagine a perfect, pure divine, higher self, Adam Cadmon, light version of yourself in front of you and just feel it coming into you and merging with your body. And as you feel that coming in, I'm just going to say this. Activating each and every person's DNA to the next highest possible frequency and restoring the divine blueprint the highest priority DNA restoration, providing new soul templates, new soul programming in each and every person, upgrading each person's DNA templates, soul programming, DNA strands, fire letters, and all levels, all dimensions at the highest possible frequency that each one can contain at this current time in the evolution now. Just fixed a whole lot of frayed DNA in a few of you. And also just, just mess, mess with technology. <laughs> oh, look, I fixed, that's how I fixed a lot of my DNA from the EMS, Aaron. Yeah. This is how I did it using these codes. Just cleared it all out. They can't compete with this stuff. So. Okay. So, yep, yeah, that's done. So. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That was awesome. It's good, isn't it, when we kind of join forces and each one bring, and then you bring in your stuff. And yeah, I like your wisdom. And, and the reason why I listen to you, because I'm pretty cautious who I let speak, because I'm, I know how the dark try and infiltrate groups. Yep. So I kind of watch people with a hawk. And I, I assume that you're basically an infiltrator until proven otherwise. But I'll let you keep talking because pretty much everything you said confirmed years ago what one of the top guys in the underground movement um, told me who another guy came out of this guy who's talking about Satanism 
Did pretty much everything he told me was what these two guys told me. And the guy in the underground movement was one of the top guys in the world with secret knowledge. Amazing. But yeah, it's yeah. I, I got sick of it. I got sick of the low vibrations, the, the chaos that came with that lifestyle too. So. Nah, so look, have a glass of with it. Sorry, Aaron. To hell with it. Now nah, to hell with them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I'm just at the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm having fun and I'm enjoying life. And ever since I just got the attitude, I'm just going to hunt these guys. And, you know, I want to be their worst nightmare. I must admit, I've been happier. I've been healthier. And I've realized that I got caught in that love and life delusion, delusion as well for a while. So <laughs> it's so much more fun when you kind of give them shit back, isn't it? Definitely. Yes, look, everyone, just um, we'll definitely, Aaron and I will be talking for the next day or two and the others and just kind of get back to you on something. So make sure you join that group. Um, bring people along you want to. And then, yeah, we'll go, I want to start doing some training and I'll do a couple and then I'll, you know, I'll get Aaron to teach some of the stuff he knows. So I just want to have a chat with him or get more of an idea of what he knows and just compare notes. But, mate, Aaron, thanks for sharing and thanks, everyone, for coming. And thanks for having an open mind and being a really great yeah, group of people. Definitely. I'm just yeah. pleased. I, I, I thought only about four or five would turn up. So I'm just, yeah. really, you know. usually when you put out like, you know, a hundred people, only a few will show up, but you have a good turnout. Uh, thank yeah, you to everyone else from the other group too, who came. Yeah. And thank, thank you, you Aaron, for having me too. Oh, my pleasure, Aaron. Um, I think these people ready to change and I think people are scared enough. And I think when phase two comes, mate, we will need new technology to cope with the numbers. <laughs> yeah. It looks like you've got you've got some pretty good advanced technology as we just witnessed. <laughs> oh mate, I've spent my whole life devoting myself to this. I I, I kind of gave up everything to get this. That's how I yeah. I mean when Jesus said Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price, but a man sold everything to get it. And yeah, that's right. There's one little I'll show you something, Aaron. This is something that I my little kind of what I call matrix thing I've come up with. So there's going to be, as you know, there's three phases. Yeah. Which you already know. Yep. So what I see is phase one, I'm calling it as warning wake up, which is what we're in now. Phase two is kind of like, you know, kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, like main course, serious next level kind of thing. Yep. And phase three is too late going to be chipped or yeah. die. That's it. Yeah, then, so, then, then they say it, so take no action. Yeah. So these ones here, so how I've kind of mapped it out for myself, because I like to do little consciousness maps on these whole things to help me do it and help people. So basically phase one, this gives you an opportunity to basically to do, you know, to do two things, die to what I call to economics. And what I mean by that is at the end of the day, we come into the world, we live and we die, or we ascend or whatever we do. But basically, we spend our time at working our ass off for money and kind of being greedy and all that. But we all, when we move on, none of it comes with us anyway. So you die to economics and what I call earthly attachments of, of all kinds, and even die to physical life. So this is the opportunity to do that. And those who do that, basically, will completely escape on all levels what's to come. That's what I was shown. So that means you'll be, you'll be in a sanctuary, you'll be financially looked after, everything. So that's the first phase. This is the chance that I see we're in now. Phase two, this one here is you're going to have to die in record time to things. And generally, in this, this group of people will lose money, have major consequences, but be spared and get through their life. You know, something like that and preserve their life. But there will be consequences. Phase three is basically, you know, we'll lose money and we'll must be willing to lose life to not be chipped. Because in other words, by then, if you don't, you know, if you're not chipped, you can't eat, you can't do anything. So that's where we're in right now. This is the phase where I was that not many will listen, but some will, which is why I'm grateful to all of you. This is where a lot more people will listen, 
but still the vast majority will go into here. So you want to make sure you're here and then hopefully your family will at least listen to you. Does that make sense, Aaron? Yep, I'm listening. Yeah. So good chance everyone right now to basically come out of this. Um, so thank you everyone. So I'll get you something and I'll see you, we'll see you guys in the next, during the week. But yeah, we'll be doing something pretty quickly because like I said, I'm keen to probably early in the week, maybe even tomorrow night, once people put down there, I'm, I'm willing to get started and show you about the oil and salt and some rituals and I'll give you precise instructions what to do. The main thing is whatever I give you, I want to give you instructions. You've got to make sure you follow them carefully for your own protection, okay? So that's really important. And yeah, but I'm keen to get some, you know, I'll show you some basics on how to get out and start fixing up your cities. And believe you me, if you fix up your cities, you'll find the masters will look after you as well. It's kind of like a good deal. So in terms of um, the one being in UK, yeah, well, it'll probably be this time of day. And if it's not, we'll just wake up early. This is important. But yes, it should be this time of day. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, everyone.